and welcome to your first max patch. So this is the canvas where you are going to plot out your ideas, your algorithms and your artworks. So that's where the action happens, that's where everything takes place. So first of all, let's see how we can actually create a max patch. So when you first open max, you are probably faced with this window. It's called the max console. Now let's distinguish between the two operative system, Windows and Mac, on which Max runs, and we will start from the Windows perspective. So if you don't have this window, but you already opened Max, you probably have the Max icon here on the Windows bar. So if you click on this little arrow, or maybe you have it already displayed here, there is this little Max icon. Now if I right click on it, uh, I can bring the Max console up, and once I have the Max console, I go here into File and I click on New Patcher and a new patch appears. Now, if you are on Mac, you will have here the Max toolbar with File, Edit and so on. So you can do the same, you can go into File and a new patcher. Great, so I will make now this patch full screen by simply clicking on the full screen icon here on Windows. And this is our first Max patch. There is also another way to create a max patch, which is to press Ctrl and N. So let me write this down. So Ctrl or Command plus N, create a new max patch. And don't worry about this object that I've just created. We will see exactly what this is and a lot more in this first section. So this is a bit small, right? I cannot really read it very well. So I'm going to zoom in. So I'm pressing Ctrl or Command, plus rotating uh, the mouse wheel in order to zoom in and out. So you can give it a try. If you don't want to use the mouse wheel, there is here on the top left corner a zoom icon. We can select uh, one of those uh, pre-created uh, zoom values. So for example, 125, 150 and so on. Or we can use our mouse wheel to zoom in. Okay, cool. So if we press Ctrl plus N, we can create a new patch or we can go into file and then create a new patcher. Great. Now, going back one second to this window that we first saw when we opened Max. Now, what exactly is this window? Well, uh, as the name says, this is the Max console. And this is the way that Max has to communicate with us. It will write here every time we make a syntax error in our patch, it will write it for us. And we can also print useful information to it. So it's a good window to have around. Now, if I click on my patch though, this window just disappears behind it. Um, in order to have it always embedded on my patch, I can click here on this icon on the right, uh, on the right toolbar of the Max patch, where it's written Max Console. I click on it and the Max Console appears and now will never disappear anymore. It will always stay into our patch. So let's, for example, try to create a, a random object that doesn't exist. The Max console tells me uh, that there is no such object. I just typed some random letters inside an empty object and Max tells me that there is no such an object. So this is pretty useful window to have on display. Now, how we can actually create a real Max object? Well, for the moment, let's do it like this. Let's go up here on the top toolbar, there are those little icons. I will go here on the icon that says numbers and I will just take the first icon, I will drag it and drop it inside the max patch. And that's our first object. Great. Um, if this toolbar was grayed out for you, that's because uh, the patch is locked. So what does it mean that the patch is locked? Do you see this little lock down here on the left bottom corner? Uh, if we close it, we can see that this bar is grayed out, which means we cannot use it. If we click on it again, it will open, which means we can actually now create new objects. So I can also create another one of those. In case this is closed, I cannot. But what I can do when this lock is closed is to actually interact with my patch. So for example, if I click on this uh, number box object and I drag, a series of number will appear. So if I drag down, they will go into the negative realm. If I drag up, they will just increase. And the same goes for the other number box. They behave exactly in the same way. So Max 
has two operating modes. One is the edit mode, which we have when the patch is unlocked, and then it has kind of the working mode, which is when the patch is locked. So Max separates the workflow in these two modes because we need the mode to kind of edit the patch. So you can see that when the patch is unlocked, so this lock here is open, when I click on this, on this object that we created before, uh, it actually drags it around. While when the patch is locked and I click on it, then I can actually modify its content, so those numbers. So this is the working mode, interaction mode, and when I unlock the patch, that's edit mode, which means I can actually edit the patch, put those objects where I want, also connect them to other objects by simply clicking on the output and then directing it toward the input of another object, for example, connecting these two number boxes together. And then if I go into working mode, so locking the patch, I can now interact with this object. You can see actually that it's even sending its internal number to the other number box. There is of course a shortcut to lock and unlock a max patch, which is control or command plus E. So let's give it a try. If I press control E now, the patch is going to be locked, which means I can interact with my uh, user interface objects. And if the, I click it again, now the patch is unlocked, which means I can actually edit the patch and move those objects around, also those objects. I can also Command Z or Control Z and go back to the previous situation. So that's kind of our editing mode, our building mode of the patch. Then if I lock it again, I will be able to edit it. As you can see, I kind of lock and unlock compulsively all the time. Uh, that's an habit that you will take uh, as well if you start working with Max. It's kind of the movement you are going to do the most with your fingers when working with Max. So great, in this absolute first lesson, we saw how to create a new Max patch, we saw what the Max console is, and we saw how we can uh, have it embedded in our Max patch. Now I'm going to save this patch, and I will see you in the next lesson, in which we are going to create some more objects and see some more properties of our Max patch. So, see you there.